Hey, you there? Yes, you. The one staring at the screen? Hi. What's up? Yeah, me too. Is everything okay? Did you have a proper meal today? Or perhaps you're hungry for something else? Hard gossip, maybe? The thought of something so interesting, hearing about it will make you smile. Food for thought, maybe. Well, if that's what you're looking for, then you're in the right place. If this, whatever you want to call it, was about me, I would have told you my name already. But the subject of the matter, weird and crazy as he is, thoughts starting like this would be fun and creative. Ha! I don't know about that, but let's see. <clears throat> <clears throat> Close your eyes and let me take your minds to a journey of imagination. Imagine. It's the year 1995, 18 October, in Pilo Hospital. Another huge headed baby is born. Or well, let's face it, all babies have big heads. Okay, focus. Focus, I know. Imagine in one of the wards, a handsome, bouncing baby boy is born. The world smiles and there is joy in the hearts of at least two people. They conspire to call him Son Lani Nyamezela Dube. Two sentences for a name, you? But we'll talk about that some other time. Forward a few months later, and picture this. A small but big-bellied baby boy, bouncing as some would call it, a true descendant of Lopengula, wearing nothing but an underwear. This is not that kind of story, by the way. Wearing impasha zesama, carrying a bunch of carrots, looking at the camera, confused, with no idea that a few years down the line, instead of carrots, he would be carrying a mic, gazing at the camera with grace. Now open your eyes. Is this the first picture of Socks the Poet you had in mind? Many of you would say... Uh, all I can say is that I, I met Socks at a point where he was trying... Uh, to, to make his mark uh, in this whole business of poetry on, on a professional level. Uh, I think it was 2018, if I'm not mistaken, and we were involved with uh, Random Poets. I believe a lot of people have heard of it uh, were in Random Poets. So uh, Random Poets is meant to capture the, the fledgling poets and give them a stage. So that's where I met with Socks. Okay. Exactly. And, uh, uh, at that point, he was in socks, as, as people know him now. Uh, he was just trying to, 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 to understand, to identify his work versus himself. Because we used to call him like a political poet. <laughs> I offer mental circumcision, for we have become vegetables. No fringe benefits, just regret and unsettled grudges. Hence the emergence of insurgents. Yes. Believe me, sergeant, you won't dodge this bullet. It's coming to you with bandages to expose your baggages. Skeletons in the closet. Why keep this much luggage when you can simply throw it away and change? We are not asking for much. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it a business, but a passion for wordplay here and there. What about you? When I met Usok's first time, I feel like he came as a, a guest. A studio, Memeza Network, who show over to Amo Ves Konoso. So Ves Konoso was a poetry show. I work with Socks. Uh, Sonja Nidube. Mostly knowing where Sonja Nidube before Socks. Okay. Well, I've always known Socks as someone who provokes thought in the things that he says. Um, so I didn't really know Socks per se. I would see his name on the newspapers, hear, talk, hear people talking about him. I just knew him as Socks the poet. Yeah, Socks. Yeah, Socks. So he's Socks is an engaged person. He puts his heart. He puts his all. When the bangati enjoy game, yeah, that's how Abantu Gasi will refer to him. Yeah, make a show. He pushes up until the end. Wait, are we still talking about the same person? Who is the socks and who is the sunlight really? But I normally love to call him so his sockless tattoo. Well, though he decided to go to when he's on stage, we have a performing Kogama socks and sometimes he performs wearing a socks only one. All that is weird, but well. Fundamentally, they're the same. To say the values that they stand for, the principles that they represent are the same. You see, socks is 
for starters, a very carefree person. Fox is one person that can sit with anyone and talk with anyone, regardless of what you do in life, your background, or who you are, or anything like that. He can easily relate with people from different backgrounds. So I like that about him. But even when he wakes up in the middle of the night and he's got a secret, Afunuguti Ati spill it. But Engela Mudanga Mjela, he thinks of me. And that's a privilege that Kulu Uguti Akwani Suguti Ati talk to me on that level. Yes, after that, you know, we started hanging out. He, I'd go to his shows, he'd go to my shows. We would just hang out even in the office and then we started and we realized, you know what, I'm a rapper, he's he's a poet, so you know what we do is kinda similar. So we'd stay after work, we'd sit down, we'd write stuff together, we Yeah, we just do almost everything together. Like, yo bro, you wanna go eat? Sure, I'm hungry. I even put him on a diet, my diet. You see how big I am. <laughs> that had him eating food, that's as much as I should be eating. And yeah. Then we just started and I think ever since then it's been this, you know, brother relationship. He's my brother, I need something, I go to him. Going to problems, I go to him, and that's how I've known him. So, Sox is a brother, a friend, a politician, a poet, a human resource person. In short, it seems like he's a jack of all trades. Is he good at anything? Wait, am I wasting my voice talking about him? Questions, questions, questions. Um, Sox and I are both poets. And Sox noticed me at the Ndwasa 100 Girls 100 uh, Voices Poetry Slam. And there was a time we met at the Random Sessions Poetry um, Open Mics. And he came up to me and he told me that he wanted to work with me on a project called Being Human. So Sox was one of the first people who actually believed in me um, just from one performance. I think he saw something within me. And from then we started working on different projects like Being Human, like I mentioned, and other shows as well. We've um, both performed at Indrasa Festival and just recently Shoko Festival when we took the prize. So yeah. Knowledge means power. Knowledge means growth. Knowledge may not mean dope, but it certainly means woke. A slip out of comatose sea. Knowledge means development in psych and intellect. And timely spasms of revelation in realms and traveled and sights unseen. It's like a binge of replenishing water drawn from King Solomon's well that smooths and oozes dry cracks. But what I was also soon to realize is knowledge may also mean biased. Because if everything that I know is molded by perception, perpetuated by the things that I hear, then what about the blind spots, the lost refractions, the blank spaces? Don't those just leave it one-sided? What about the different questions never asked? The different theories never heard? How many things have we accepted as facts simply because they've been echoed for millenniums without any real explanations? I'm thinking, why do we call ourselves black when we're clearly different shades of brown? Does this knowledge that we carry force us to accept that the description of our skin is a depiction of everything negative, ill-omened and bad? If that's true, then I don't blame you. Yes, you who would buy a tank of Deprazone to try and scrub the black out. You who was bludgy and black and blue when you had thoughts of independence and enlightenment till you had a mental blackout. Look at us now. We're experiencing the physical manifestation of darkness. These controlling notions, they have corroded our minds and souls like corrosive lotions. Knowledge is power. It is the power to build or destroy you. Be careful what you feed your mind with. Okay, Shoko Festival um, was curated digitally this time around uh, because of the pandemic this year. So what happened was we had a setup which allowed for us to be in a team you see we were going against um, Harare so we came together as a joint force um, we weren't going against each other we were actually working together and in that festival in that festival in particular we fed off of each other's energy so the feel of synergies and the feel of um, 
companionship and comradeship that came together during the Shoko festival and he was a great sport I remember even telling him after his performance that he did so well and that even motivated me to um, to do better than I thought I would it felt great because it's something that we had already done before um, like I said we were being human together so it was a familiar feeling there's nothing better than being in a team with someone who you've worked with before someone who knows your strengths and weaknesses so they know the right words and the right things to say to get you um, at your a-game so yeah he was a team player he did amazing and I was really proud hi I'm God Adam before we begin I need you to close your eyes Take a deep breath, exhale, breathe in and out, and in and out. Now listen to the sound of my voice and let it linger. I will count to seven, then slap my finger. You will wake up and three magic words I will whisper, and you will tell me what reaction those words will trigger. Now let us begin. One. Picture yourself in a garden, it's a marvel, flowers can't help but swivel, bees are busy buzzing, birds singing and crickets chirping, it's Eden, you just put the lion to sleep in its den, your name is Adam and you have everything. Two, you just talked to God, me, over a cup of tea, he promised you a good woman, you will probably call her sweet tea, born of your bones, you and hair will be close, you will be one, but of course she will look better than you, now you can't help but imagine, oh, how you wish you had a clue. Three, imagine you are the seeker and this is your legend. Since God promised you have been diligently seeking seven years of constant soul searching and now you feel it in your bones that something is definitely missing. Four, your heart is dancing, your lips are singing, you dream of her even when you're not sleeping, you're daydreaming, seeing things and calling them visions. She is your vision of grace and ecstasy, perfection living in the walls of your imagination. Five, now pay attention and listen. Listen to the sound of her voice as it fills you with flames of desire picture her hips swaying leaving you with no choice but to burn from this fire burning with passion like Shadrach she is no ordinary fairness she's a phoenix and in all fairness she warms your heart and burns all those who are not earnest to be honest six she is perfect like desiderata she is all you want and need the reason your heart pumps as you breathe the better half you desperately need a constellation of the darkest scars the remedy to your darkest scars and the reason you see better than Bruno Mars. She is perfect. Seven. Now to complete the trick, tell her what she means to you. How she is the only fountain able to quench your desire. The elixir of life that puts your pants on fire. The embodiment of the Messiah in goodness and in grace. Once upon a time you were all alone in a lonely garden but now I present to you Eve now picture yourself in the same garden it's a marvel flowers can't help but swivel bees are busy buzzing birds singing and crickets chirping it's Eden you just put the lioness to sleep in your den she is Eve and your name is Adam and she is the only woman you will forever love now you truly have everything Adam wake up and listen love is everything thank you what i like what i admire not only like but what i admire about the socks is that he has managed to to, to find the bridge between the art the commerce the commercial okay. aspect of, of the art he has managed like right now as we're seeing this is one of his works he has managed to, to get that bridge okay art at the end of the day art is commerce you have to 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 to, to find that uh, common ground between your work and your audience some of the poems are there, they're stuck in their heads. Like, I'm a good poet, like, but they keep it to themselves. Like, okay, I'm good. I'm not going to show people. Okay. You understand? And at the end of the day, we fail to, to get uh, a business sense out of our, our, our art. But Usox has managed to get a business sense out of a craft. Usox is an engaged person. He puts his heart, he puts his all into it. He sees it through to the end. And that's the same for. HR socks and <laughs> and poet socks and I think also another thing is he's very scholastic about his approach to everything. Unlike me, I will not read <laughs> if I had the chance. Socks will read about a topic before he writes a poem. He will read about a project before he facilitates it, and that is the similarities. The difference I think that you can draw between the two is just that. When Socks comes to his poetry, he's really out there to give the best of his mind to people. 
and I think with work it's more or less, you know, I hope his boss doesn't hear this, but you know, he's more like, let's do this and let's get down with this so we can get back to poetry. <laughs> okay. So I was blind, but I was blind. I was blind, but I was blind. So we laughed. Then Sati sees us, tears down the hype. Any gigae ikona dalali last year. Then from Kompana, Sati nga zangis practice a song. But nga pungoza, i PCI kepo e shai yenza. Then, kwa nge service is going to the stage. So hey, how are you feeling? Then ushala si toye blind yola, but nga miti nga blind yola. So, nga ushala wu intoli ane uti, so nge si blind. So, every time nga spi ufuma vende intoli ane uti, ah! So we we kind of compiled some sort of an A team of the next generation of poets. LOL, an A team reminds me of the time we were growing up. Sketch me again, Mr. T. Damn, now I feel old. I wonder what the future of poetry holds, though. Like, what are their predictions regarding the name Socks the Poet? I bet they'll all say the same thing in different words. So working with him has been like an, an eye-opener. Uh, the major work that we did together was for Intuasa 2019. Uh, we're doing this uh, show under the, the concept, Why I'm Sitting in the Dark. That's when I, I got to see like the, the full potential of the socks. And uh, before that, we, we did uh, Amas Lambs, like, all of art and everything, but the competition is more like you're having any control rather than rather okay. than uh, when you're, you're set free to you guys come up with the concept and perform your poems, write your own content. But for 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 Islam, it's rather controlled, so it's so hard for you to see potential in your mind because you went for for status uh, from winning Ilafaj to Islam in 2019, I believe, in Tuasa, where he was knocked the first. First round, can you believe that? <laughs> so Islam is like it's just like that. You cannot you cannot assess someone to using in a, a, a competitive uh, kind of recital. But when you say like okay, you guys are doing now the open mic, that's when I saw it in, in Tuasa under this banner. A, 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 why is it in the dark? That's when I, I saw what it socks has the ability to push Ama boundaries a poetry into into something that we have never yet seen. And. Here I am, with my hands up where you can see them, I promise not to resist. I won't fight, because fighting means like chasing boosts and fighting across the middle of the night. I've gone ahead of you, and that alone says she burst down my spine. I hear you, I feel you. If you want me to really hear, see, that's the day. I don't know if you're really here or if you've been here before. I, I, I. I feel you creeping into my chest, I feel you all over my nostrils, my coat, my neck, but you are not really here, and I've seen your trail. This is not just a dream, but it's becoming a reality. And we hope, Uguti, this is going to grow bigger than this. This is just the beginning, but the beginning marks something which is bigger than something that we can look forward to. So, as a team, even as his manager and everyone that is working with Sox, we are saying, Uguti, let this go on. Usox, Gabang Usox on stage. But still, Agwani Suguti had to change lives on stage. Moba, we don't just perform for no reason, but to perform to change lives and also to change certain narratives that are there. And he's there to do that, and I believe he can do that. I see it creating the minds that will change the world. Okay. It's, a, it's a relationship of, he's got the ideologies that leaders need 
for them to be impactful leaders. And it's one of those, when he talks, I don't think he speaks to the general public. I think he speaks more to the people who would assume positions of power. So, like, I remember his time, he had this piece, I don't know if it's art yet, but he had this time piece that he did about, talk about atrocities that happened between generations and about how racism got to happen, questioning all those things. And I think mostly, it reminded me mostly about Franz Fanon because he was like, oh, you know, and then you can also tell from that that he's well read. And what he's imparting to people is knowledge for leadership. It's like, oh, you need to learn that so that you could better engage the people around you. So I'm giving you a tool that could help you to, you know, engage the people around you. There you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed every bit of this film. As for me, I did, especially the part where I get to catch the check. Wait, what currency am I being paid in? Socks, socks. Wait, am I being paid for this? I have a feeling the kind is exposure. Damn. Anywho, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Socks the Poet. Patience. He's coming after the stock screen. What if, what if every piece of knowledge you possess was actually wrong? What if? What if all you learned are lies construed by people desperate to belong? What if? What if weakness is what it means to be strong? Will it mean you are misinformed by default? Well, everything wrong basically becomes your fault. Wait. If knowledge influences choice, that would mean you start to second guess your every choice. You can't even dare to listen to your inner voice. Your thoughts may be loud. Silence starts to sound like noise. And just to sound profound, what is lost in this case can never be found. So will you be happy or will you be sad or happily sad in such a world everything bad is good. We kill, we steal, we lie, we cry, we cry, we drown, we clown. Life as we know it is upside down. So what if? What if to die was to actually live? What if carbon dioxide was the right air to breathe? What if fish could fly and bear the beast of the sea? Will the vapor in the air be able to tell the flying fish to migrate in season? Will the birds be able to sing as they swim? What if? What if? See? I told you! Cheers.